Uh, following along the same lines, I'd like to ask the Minister of Infrastructure if he will provide an update on progress with the new means testing policy for existing tenants in respect of fixed-term tenancy contracts. Mr Harmer. Thank you. The policy for needs-based review of existing housing tenants at the expiry of their fixed-term tenancy is not new. It, was in, it has, been, has been included in a tenant handbook issued with each new tenancy agreement since fixed-term tenancies were first issued in 2014 and following Timwald approval in 2013. The policy pack for implementation and management of fixed-term <coughs> tenancies was published at the same time and refreshed and reissued to all local authority housing providers in April 2017. In terms of progress, the policy document the guidance has been, is published and training on its implementation has been provided to all administering, administering housing providers. The Department has also carried out an assessment in conjunction with housing providers of the number of tenants who are on fixed term tenancies and when these tenancies are due to expire, the first of which <coughs> is a small number are due in 12 months' time. Supplementary, Mr Hooper. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I take issue with something the Minister has said there. I'd just like him to clarify this. He said that uh, the means testing review is not a new policy, but the concept of pay to stay in public sector housing surely is a new policy that doesn't currently exist. It has been introduced into local authorities uh, without consultation and without Timwald approval. I'd just like him to confirm that for me. Minister. Um, thank you. It's, it's not a new policy. As I said, it's come back to 2013. I'm quite happy to discuss. Uh, with the member. Uh, we are going through a period of implementation. As I said, that's due to be implemented in 2019. It's been very clear from the beginning with, with, um, with, with the fixed term tenancies that that would be the way it would go. It was very clear that there would be a maximum threshold. And quite frankly, I think it's the right policy because what we're saying is we are putting housing need where it is most needed. Where is housing most needed? It's those, those, those who are vulnerable and so forth. Therefore, um, we, it is absolutely the right policy that for, for, for those that can, can afford more to pay more to stay where they are, and it's also the right policy that if, if they exceed the maximum threshold, that we look at, we look at that. So it, it is policy. It is. I haven't. Just to be absolutely clear, we will be talking with local authorities as we, as we bring through this this this, this policy. It, we believe it will affect a, a small number to begin with. It is the right thing to do and it's the right thing to take forward. <coughs> Mr. Callister. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Just listening to what the Minister is saying there, I'm not too sure that the policy is absolutely right or is absolutely clear because the, the Minister is saying on one hand that we must protect um, the vulnerable. It's, it, the policy is all about the, those most in need get the houses, and I totally agree with that, but surely the policy to, to pay and to stay, even if you do not reach, the, uh, if you go beyond the criteria where you should have an exit strategy, these um, tenants will be able to stay um, and pay more, but surely the policy is that those who most need of local authority housing should get those properties as quickly as possible. So my question to the Minister is, will he look again at this, this potential policy to pay and to stay? in local authority housing and to actually put in place a proper exit strategy that actually benefits housing as a whole. Thank you. Minister to reply. Thank you. We've already, um, it, it absolutely is the right policy. I don't agree. Um, we're talking about people who are above the eligibility criteria. So therefore, if they were to go on the housing list, they would not, we, they would not qualify. So that's the, first, that's the first thing. And there are many people on the waiting list that are still waiting for housing. There's many people in private sector housing that do not have housing. So those people that are above the eligibility will um, be required to pay a, a small, will be required to pay um, a, a, as they can afford it, though more. Those above um, a, a large threshold, at, at, at this point 60,000, which is more than, uh, you know, uh, sufficient, and, and actually their housing costs will be sufficiently quite small, that, that is where we, you know, we will look, work with local authorities for looking at other housing need. But I do, I, I, I do not agree. I think it is the right policy. We have to be brave. We have to be bold. We have to put things where housing is most needed. If we don't make difficult decisions here, where else are we not going to make difficult decisions? So it absolutely is the right policy. Yeah. Honourable Member for Onkin, Ms Edge. Thank you, Mr President. Um, I'm just, is, does the Minister agree with me that if there's any colleagues within the room that require any clarification on any of the policies that are currently coming through, we're very welcome to welcome them into the Department to have those discussions. 
Yes, and, and on that basis, I will be. Um, um, I completely agree, and I would invite anybody to have further questions to, to, to come and we can discuss those further. And uh, we'll probably be making further presentations to two more members on this matter. Supplementary, Mr. Hooper. Thank you, Mr. President. So the Minister has confirmed that this policy of paying to stay in social housing has been in place since the Timwald Resolution of 2013. I'm sure I heard that right. Um, I'm still confused as to the consultation with local authority. This policy appears to be a final policy. It appears to have been worked up, finalised, done and dusted. That's it. Why was the consultation with local authorities not undertaken before we reached this stage? Minister. At this point, we are going through an implementation phase. We will be talking. The policy is defined. It has been talked through. It has been going way back to 2013. It was first introduced then. We will be working with local authorities and, and uh, continue to work with them. There has been some training, as I said previously. We will be working with them to, to take this through and to take this po uh, policy through. Honourable Member for Douglas South, Mrs. Beecroft. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, regardless of whether it's the right policy or not, I just wonder if you could give me some clarif clarification on a couple of points. I think it was April 2013 um, that you say that it was agreed in Tinwald. Could you just confirm which document it was that it was agreed in Tinwald, that it was voted for? And could you also confirm when it went out for consultation to local authorities, this particular policy? Minister. Thank you. As we're getting into the area of detail on consultation, and I think that's, that, that's, um, I, I will come back to the member, as I say, it goes back to 2013 when the policy was first um, in, in introduced. But obviously, on, on those sort of issues of detail and on, on the historical, we will we'll come back to you. As I say, if there's any questions, please feel free to talk to me and also the department. The member for council, Mr. Cretney. Yes, could I ask the Minister, when constructing the policy, uh, was account taken of people whose income may have reached a certain level, but whose age causes real difficulties in terms of getting a mortgage? Uh, was consideration given to people caught in that trap? Yeah, yeah. Minister? I think uh, the member, make, uh, member of council makes a good point. Obviously, that is, it is a consideration. As I said, um, in terms of it, it will be those who are above the eligibility criteria, so they wouldn't be eligible for a house if they were to go on, ha on, on the waiting list right now. Um, all those sort of factors um, are, are, are important. Um, obviously, as, 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 um, as, as, as circumstances change, that is why we've put in this poly why there is that sort of that, that gap between those who, who are above the eligibility requirement criteria and therefore will have to pay more, which they can afford and is below. Um, but obviously that, that's something we're taking forward. Honourable Member for Douglas Central, Mr Thomas. Thank you very much indeed, Mr President. Does the um, Minister agree with me that the 25 recommendations laid down in the November 2013 action plan have been worked through with local authorities repeatedly? And just because you don't agree with something, it doesn't mean it hasn't been talked about and consulted on. But secondly, would the Minister agree with me that, um, that it's welcome that this housing debate is hotting up and he welcomes the fact that we need decisions about national housing policy now. Yes, and I, and I would thank the member and, and, and all members actually for bringing this topic up. It is, is absolutely the right time to talk about this. We are um, going through the stages of implementation. As I say, it could quite easily, if you take one item, if you, as I would say, it needs testing is one item out of the 25 different recommendations to improve things for our uh, for our island, for our tenants. That's what we're, 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 we're doing. And this is one of those, and absolutely I would welcome that conversation. Mr Callister. Um, thank you, Mr President. We seem to move slightly from the, the question, but I'm going to ask it because the Minister's just respond, responded to it. We seem to be talking now about the David Tolson recommendations, which were tabled before this Court in November 2013. There was a number of recommendations, and my concerns in respect of those recommendations, I have tabled it as a written question, Mr President, but given the, 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 the answer the Minister's just given me, is the, is the Minister saying that the Department is pushing forward with those Timwald recommendations that were agreed in November 2013? Thank you, Mr. President. We are obviously um, 
The, um, I have responded in the written answer to this very question. Uh, this question is about Timwald, it's not about Tolson, it's about what Timwald agreed and the policies that Timwald said. And of those, we made some very important and fundamental, um, uh, important policy directions. We have been, not just this, but across the board, taking all those policy, uh, policies forward. We are about, um, as I said in, in, in the written answer, um, making, making significant progress. This is about making sure that our housing meets our social and economic needs, and, 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 and I would still commend that policy. The final supplementary, uh, Mr Hooper. Thank you, Mr President. So, the Minister has now finally confirmed that we do have a policy in place. Uh, his view is this was approved by Tim Wald in November 13. Can I ask then why, when this issue has been raised repeatedly, not only here, but also in another place, also by policy review committees, his response has regularly been, we are actively looking at the policy at the moment and we'll have some proposals shortly, well ahead of 2018. Um, I'm not going to go through uh, historical records in the sense of that we were talking about, I know there have been previous conversations about needs testing. This area is about needs testing, about housing meeting people's needs. Um, the policy has been there since 2013. I think it's been very clear that we've had a number of roadshows with local authorities, we've, we've had um, with, with, with different, different areas, and we've had a number of discussions, and, and, and obviously we will continue to do so because obviously it's important. <coughs> work collaboratively with the local authorities. Honourable members, uh, before we turn to question four, I can announce a further